Hello to Thursday's thread, the first Thursday in April, and this one was recorded due to some technical issues earlier today. We are going to be talking about selvages, how to get nice, clean selvages. One of those things that many weavers worry over for years, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. What can we do to make it a little bit a smoother transition and get those nice selvages? Well, I'm going to show you several different things that I've learned over the years and some of the things that I've learned from other weavers. Some of them I've learned from friends and others I've learned from going and reading articles on them. And one of the ladies that I've been reading about is Jane Stafford and she's given some hints. And I've also discovered that some of the things that she does are things that I've, I've also done. So let's join me now as we start with learning how to wind a bobbin. And now we're going to be talking about winding a bobbin. Many of us learned for years that we were to wind the bobbin and fill up the ends first. So we would go back and forth and fill up our ends. Well, I recently read that Jane Stafford suggested that we go straight across not filling up the edges, going straight across. And then we start to shorten. We don't go across all the way. It's a little less. And we're actually going to end up with kind of a sausage looking piece, a little fat in the middle. Now I'm going to confess to you that I don't use a hand wound bobbin very often. I used an electric bobbin winder. So I'm going to stop right now so you have an idea of what it looks like. So basically the ends are thin and the center is thick. And here's another one I did earlier. So she suggests doing that. So then when you're throwing your shuttle back and forth, it'll wind off and it won't get stuck on the edges. So if some of you discover that, that might be something to try. Now, something else you might want to check out, i move the bobbin out of the way. I'm going to hold up a couple of shuttles. First of all, my favorite shuttle just happens to be this particular brand. It feels good in my hands. It's the right weight. I've been using it for years. I have probably six or seven of these shuttles. There, I use them so much that well, this is one of the first ones. I wore the paint or this varnish away from each side where my thumbs are. Found out that this is, just feels good in my hands. It has the regular six inch bobbin. Now some people like to have a larger one. Here's another one, it's open bottom. Has a larger bobbin on it. Because people feel that, well maybe if I have a larger bobbin I can put more yarn on it. In actuality, if you would could measure, you would find you really don't put that much more yarn on a larger bobbin. But again, feel, see how it feels in your hands. Now these all come out from the middle and the other thing that a lot of people are seem to be liking is the end feed shuttle. Now this is a larger one. This is actually for your hand, but her, uh, this company makes a smaller one and there's a couple companies out there. And obviously you have a pern, so the yarn winds off different in a different way and it is called an end feed shuttle. Some people like those. So you might want to try different shuttles. For me, I finally found the one I like. I've tried others and I keep sticking with this particular shuttle. Now we're going to go over and I'm going to give you a little spin around here of the studio. See a little bit of the yarn that's on the shelves. And up oh, right there is my electric bobbin winder. My friend. I actually started using that years ago when I did have an AVL loom and use the uh, larger shuttles, the uh, ones that were for a fly shuttle. All right, let's take a look at this particular loom. This one has a turn twill pattern. So when you're weaving twills, sometimes you don't always catch the edges every single time. Now I'd like you to take a look at both sides. From a distance, they look fine. And as we get closer, this side does not have a floating selvage. 
this side does. And you can see up here, this is the floating selvage. I'm going to do a little demonstration on how the floating selvage works. Personally, I don't care for them. That's my preference. We all have different things we like to do and things that we're not too fond of. Bring the camera to the side here and you can see how it works. Whoops, sorry about that. So the idea with the floating selvage is when you're on this side, you press on your treadle, you go over top of the floating selvage, and then it would be going underneath on this side if there was one. So if I, I pretend I go over top, it's going to come out from underneath the floating selvage. We do it again, back and forth, and we're going over top and under. But what I found is I call them organic selvages. Even if it doesn't go underneath every single thread, it still works well for me, and the selvages work out very nicely. Now I'm going to tell you a few other things that I do to also help the selvages become nice and neat. A little bit of practice and some other tricks. So we're going to go to another loom. This is a smaller loom that I have. I have it set up, and sometimes it also has to do with the setup, how you get started. So here is a loom that has some hand-spun yarn. And I'm hopefully I get the whole picture in there. So my weaving instructor, my very first weaving instructor, showed me a technique. And what we did was we tied the middle section first, each one. Then we went from one side to the other. We only doing, we do a, a square knot eventually. But right now, we do the first tie. So I still do the old left over right and then right over left. So I have the first one. Give it a nice tug. Each one of these have had a nice tug. And then I have this one. I'm going to do the same thing. Do the first part of the square knot. Again, there are a lot of different ways of tying on your warp. You have last, you know, different ways. But anyway, we find what works for us. So I'm sharing with you what I found works for me, and you probably will find something else, perhaps, or maybe you want to give this a try. So I've done all of the initial first ones. So now what the plan is to go back, and we can tug each one of these, give them a little extra tug, both sides. And then the last one. The theory behind this is that as you're tightening these, you go back to the middle. Now I'm going to do the other part of the square knot. The, the idea is that the center ones are fairly tight. But as you go back and forth, the outside ones get a little tighter, which means by the time you're finished, your weaving or your tying on the knot, the edges are even tighter. So you go again, you see I'm going back and forth from the center. And a little tug. This one. And then I have the last ones with the outside. So technically, a little extra tug on all of those. Again, the theory is that the outside ones are a little bit tighter. Again, that's the theory. So that's all ready to start weaving. All this beautiful hand-spun yarn. Lots of fun to do. All right, let's take a look at the last loom we're going to look at tonight. This is kind of a rainbow color. You might have seen it before or not. And take a look at the selvages on this one. Let's take a look at them. There's a twill pattern. They look pretty nice. However, there's no floating selvages going on here. And in actuality, when I looked, I believe it catches two threads and then four are, are not caught on one side and the other side it's three and three. I'm happy with this. 
I have no problem. But while I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take the over here camera and I'm going to do a little weaving and while I'm weaving I'm going to talk a little bit more about some other things I've learned about getting good salvages. Some other tricks or basically some things that work over time. So I have my bobbin, it's all ready. The tension, the tension is another thing that's important. I like to have, I can release it just a little bit, but if I put a little more tension on it, I like to feel like it's like a, a drum. So we're gonna start, and I'm gonna open the shed, throw my shuttle, beat, and then I change the shed and push it back. Now I'm really slowing down right now. Some of you watched videos of me weaving. I'm like, this is really slow. But I had to slow down, and, and I found that that's what I do. It's kind of halfway in between. I'm going to speed up a little bit now. So about halfway in between is when I start to go back and forth. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm also doing a nice little rocking back and forth. It's kind of rhythmic, which is also another thing that I didn't realize is another good habit to get into. So I'm back and forth. I'm going to do one more. Now I've also can feel the weight of the shuttle. And like I said earlier, the shuttle feels good in my hands. And as I'm throwing it back and forth, I'm watching it go back and forth. I'm making sure, a couple of things, that I'm doing the right treadling pattern. And I'm also feeling the weight of the, the shuttle. As it continues to go, the shuttle actually gets a little lighter, obviously because the bobbin's getting lighter, and it starts to wind off differently. So sometimes if you feel that it's not wind, you might put a little brake on it. You can take your thumb and maybe, I'd say, put a little brake on it and pull. I give a little extra tug. When it gets near the end of the bobbin and it starts to get lighter, I personally find that I need to do a little bit of extra tug on there. Now what I'd like to do is go a little bit longer here. but I'm not going to quite go as far. Another thing that many weavers try to do, myself included, is I try to keep weaving up as far as I can. Well, what happens if you get too far up and you advance your warp? You're going to see some, the edges are getting kind of loose and, and so on. You get too far. So as Jane says, stop it. <laughs> There's a sweet spot. And the sweet spot is maybe about here because if you get too much farther all sorts of problems happen so you want to think about that and stop advance your warp a lot sooner than you think you need to so those are some and stop advance your warp a lot sooner than you think you need to so those are some of the things that i've learned and let me show you what some of these things look like products when they're done so again, I call this organic because the selvages are not perfectly straight, but they're even. They have a nice flow. And this is for a scarf. Again, a scarf flows anyway, so I'm okay with that. I also have a few towels. This is, was done on a tabby. Look at both sides here pretty straight. Every once in a while there's a little bubble in there, but that's okay. People know it's hand woven that way. This was the same warp. No floating salvages. Nice, even. Just a little wavy, but not too much. And then also on some of the clothing that I do. I think the, um, no, which is easier to see. Maybe if I take the red and put this over top of, you can see the selvages a little better. This is also a twill you can see. And as you go along, you can see there's a little bit of waviness going on. But in the past, like many of the new weavers, I turned my hems on everything. And once in a while, we have something that was kind of wonky on us. This is all, uh, I believe this is 8-2 uh, tensile. This is very heavy 8-8 cotton. The uh, 
uh, hand spun and scented eight dents per inch. So those are some of the hints or some of the ideas that I've discovered that worked for me. And let me turn the camera back. So before I end this video, I'd like to say a few words again about your shuttle. Sometimes when people are weaving, you may have been told that if your selvages on the one side are a little uneven, the way to correct that is to scoot yourself to the side that is a little uneven. Or if it's the other side, obviously scoot back to the other side. Sometimes that also will work. I've also found that if I take more care with how I catch the shuttle when I'm throwing it back and forth, making sure that each time I throw it, it's the same motion and I'm catching the shuttle in the same spot back and forth, that also seems to help my selvages. So another thing you can try. And the last thing I'd like to end with is when you're weaving, sometimes put on something that maybe you don't even care about the selvages. Perhaps it's yardage. Perhaps it's just something for fun. And just sit and weave and get involved with the rhythm and end up, maybe you'll end up weaving a lot of fun yardage like this. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you all again. And take care. Bye-bye.